Hello and welcome to MarinaReef.com's Budget Reef Tank Build Series. Today we are going to tackle the topic of aquascaping, which is basically adding rock and sand to the tank. Now when you're picking out an aquascaping material, you're going to pick some rocks out and some sand out. You basically have two options for rock. There's going to be dry rock, which is rock that's essentially mined or made out of a plaster type material for aquariums. And then there's live rock, which is rocks that have been in the ocean and then have been colonized with all the living organisms that live in the ocean. And the advantage of live rock is that in addition to just rock that you get to look at, you get all the natural bacteria that was living on that rock that helps process waste in the tank, as well as a lot of microorganisms. You may see things like little tiny starfish, sea sponges, um, snails, seaweeds, and all of those are going to break down waste in the tank, process it, start producing natural plankton, and really be the start of creating a natural reef environment. Now, in general, dry rock, which is just plain rock, is gonna be a good deal cheaper than live rock, but there are a lot of benefits to live rock. So you may think if we're on a budget, we wanted to go with all dry rock, but we did a price comparison and we found out that the difference is not as extreme as you'd think. So for this build, we picked out 20 pounds of Carib Sea Life Rock. This is a dry rock that we sell at marinareef.com. It's a nice, attractive looking rock that is um, purple in color, so it's gonna look mature right away. And then we've also ordered in some aquaculture live rock from Florida. Now, when we did the math on this really quick, we got about 37 pounds once you weighed it out of live rock. And if we didn't do that, we'd go with more of the life rock. And we found there was only about a $40 difference. And if you ask me, if I didn't go with the live rock, I would probably buy a bottled bacteria to start the tank, whereas I'm getting it here, that may cost me 20 bucks. So in the end, I'm paying maybe 20 to $30 more for all of the life on this rock. I've already found snails on it. I found different kinds of seaweed on it. I've seen oysters on it, sponges on it. All of that's gonna mature the tank much, much faster. So in particular, if you are a beginner, we would really recommend you use some live rock. But because the live rock's more expensive, we're still using the dry as a way to offset that cost a little bit, which is a great option. For sand, we picked out this Carib Sea Seafloor Special Grade Sand. I'm just gonna tell you guys, this is the most popular sand and it's the most popular for a reason. It's the one that most people should go with. You may notice that we didn't go with a live sand and that's quite frankly because most live sand that I've seen just looks like sand in bacteria water and usually it's a better value just to get that bacteria on the rock or in a bottled bacteria product. You generally don't get large sand sifting organisms in live sand. You just kind of get bacteria water. So the value is not quite as extreme there. Now to fuse our rock together, we're going to use Two Little Fishies Sticks Cement. I've used this once before. This isn't a necessity, but this tank in particular is very tall. And one thing I worry about with tall tanks is once you build the rocks up, if they get knocked by a fish or a sea urchin or something, they could swing forward and then maybe scratch the front pane. So by cementing the rocks together, we'll have a sturdy rock structure that's gonna stay in place and not cause rock avalanches. Um, it could also mean that a coral with coral on top of a rock could fall face first and shatter or get damaged. So it is nice to have those rocks firmly in place. And the last thing we'll mention is we're going to put some egg crate on the bottom of this aquarium. Now there's a couple reasons you want to do this. If you put egg crate on the bottom, it'll help distribute the weight. So if you have a large rock, it's not going to have it all on one point. Now, I've never personally had a problem with that, but I've known some people putting very large rocks in tanks of thinner glass where the glass has cracked from dropping that big rock on it. So the egg crate is going to distribute that. And more importantly, once we lay the egg crate down and put the rocks on it, we're going to use the cement to really anchor those rocks exactly into one place, further stabilizing the structure and stopping things from falling over. So we picked out a two foot by two foot piece of egg crate. This tank is roughly four foot by one foot. So we're gonna chop it in half and then spread it out. Then we'll work on putting our rock structure together. Right now, we're gonna take a little bit of break, get that all into place, and you guys can check back with us later. So at this point in our process, we've got our egg crate down on the bottom to distribute the weight of the rocks. And we've got the rocks in place, but we haven't cemented anything yet. We like to put them in first to get an idea of what things are gonna look like, and then go back and cement the joints together to get everything firmly in place. 
Couple things to note, as you can tell that the purple pieces are the Carib Sea Life Rock. And then the Live Rocks also have the seaweed and other stuff on it. You can tell it's alive. Um, I tried to keep the Live Rock pieces towards the top and that's because a lot of the organisms on it are partially photosynthetic so they do need some light on it and then use the dry rock pieces on the bottom because there's nothing alive on them yet. Um, we also want to note that around the edges we've tried to keep enough room so that a cleaner could go back there and scrub out those areas. We've also stacked the rock against the back wall. You're going to find a lot of people who recommend not doing that so that there's water flow behind it. However, this tank is just so proportionately narrow that if we didn't do that, the rock would be very close to the front of the tank. So we've opted to do it in this case. So without any further ado, we're gonna go back, work on putting the cement together to get all these rocks firmly in place. So now we're gonna mix up some cement to go over these joints. We're using the Two Little Fishy Stick Cement. Now this cement ships in a little bucket and that's for you to mix your cement up in. And then it comes as two portions. There's a liquid portion that you need to add a little bit more water to. It's 375 mils, so we'll pour some water in this pouch. And there's a dry portion. And once you mix these two together, it'll start to form that concrete. Now once it starts forming, you only have about 15 minutes to work with it. So it's good to mix up, mix up small batches at a time. And then you can adjust the consistency by adding a little bit more water or a little bit more of the powder. Once that's mixed up, we're gonna put this over the joints in our rock structure to keep everything firmly together. And we'll have you guys follow up once we have everything cemented in place. For the next step, we're gonna get ready to put our sand in the tank. Now you can just pour the sand in the tank. If you do, it's gonna be really cloudy for a long time. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get some of the sand, pour it in this bucket, then basically use this hose just to spray to the bottom and let all of the kind of milky discolored sand particles pour off. We really only want the granules. We don't want the dust that's in there. So we're just gonna pour it in, stir it a little bit at a time, wait till the water runs clear and then we're gonna dump that off, then we'll be ready to put the sand in the tank. We now have our sand rinsed and it's time to put it in the tank. Now you can just get that big bucket of sand, lift it up and dump it in but I find that tends to make everything uneven. So I'm just gonna use a cup, scoop some out, then we're gonna place it in and work until we've got all the sand in there. Now we have sand in the tank and it's time to start filling the tank up with water. Now, because we have live rock in this tank, we're gonna to have to mix our salt water ahead of time. If you wanna know how to do that, see our previous video on mixing salt water and we're gonna start pouring it in. I'm gonna to try to pour the water over the rocks themselves. That's gonna keep the live rock moist, and it's also gonna stop it from disturbing the sand, which will limit the cloudiness in the water. Without further ado, let's go ahead and go. Well, now our tank is filled with water and we're getting ready to turn all of our gear on. A couple things to note is if you have a tank with a plastic rim like this one, we're gonna recommend that you fill it so the water level is above the rim. 
It's gonna look more attractive from the start, but it's also gonna look more attractive in the long run because you will develop a hard water ring. And if you have the level over that rim, you're not gonna see it. It's gonna look much better over time. Um, when we turn all the equipment on, you're gonna notice that the cloudiness in the water is gonna to start to clear up. If you have a cloudy tank like this, don't worry, it's very normal. It often takes two to three days to clear up. One last thing we'll point out, is this guy here is a Marine Land Magnum polishing filter. This is not required and it's definitely not something I would buy if I were trying to save every last dollar, but this is excellent at getting particles out of the water. So we're gonna pop it in after we get everything turned on just to try to get the water clearer faster so we can give you guys the next video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and flip the switch on that power strip and get the gear turned on. Now this is gonna help clear everything up because the pumps are going to stir up all the particles, get them into the water column, and then the filter and protein skimmer are gonna catch the particles and then pull them out. With the protein skimmer, you may notice, this protein skimmer is immediately overflowing. That is completely normal for a new protein skimmer, especially a new protein skimmer with a lot of gunk in the water. There's just so much for it to pull out. We got it moved all the way to the most um, low setting and we're still getting foaming. That's totally normal. We're just going to keep dumping this out as soon as it fills up and that'll help pull the gunk out of the water. Well, thank you very much. That's basically it. We're going to let everything clear up. Once it's clear, you'll join us for Cycling Tank.